Okay. So, hello. Is is anybody still there? <laughs> yeah. It sounds like yes. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to our presentation about enhancing uh, accessibility of Linux desktops. Uh, let us shortly shortly introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Wojtek Polášek. I'm working as a software engineer at Red Hat in security compliance team, and I'm a blind Linux user for more than 14 years. Uh, and I hand hand the word to Luca. Hi everyone. My name is Lukas Director. I'm also a Red Hatter, but working in the desktop team and. Yeah, I'm using Linux for, uh, let's say, six years, and uh, uh, let's start something uh, about what accessibility actually, actually is for it. Uh. Yeah, thank you, Lukas. So, next slide with the accessibility definition, please. So, uh, very shortly, uh, basically, when we are going to talk about accessibility here, uh, it means especially accessibility of Linux desktop for blind user. That means that if there is some object on the desktop which user should be able to interact with, he is actually able to do that, yes? That means to read the content of the text field or to interact with the button or to move a slider or something, something like that. Next slide, please. Uh, so why actually we would like to care about accessibility on Linux desktop? Well, I mean, uh, currently most of blind people are using on their desktops either Windows or Mac OS. And I don't see a reason why they shouldn't be able to use Linux because uh, sighted people can normally do that. And uh, I guess everyone knows what Linux has to offer, so I, I don't see a reason why we should limit this offer to, to these people. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, now, what is the current state of accessibility uh, on Linux desktops? Well, I have a two good and bad news for you. Uh, the good news is actually that when you are a slightly advanced or intermediate Linux user, you are actually able to use uh, Linux desktop quite well and on the same par as, for example, Windows. Uh, just a side note that this is true for limited set of distribution and desktop environments. Uh, the bad news is that uh, when you are, a, let's say, Linux newbie and you, you want to transfer from Windows to Linux for some reason, uh, you are currently still facing uh, several things which might turn you away. Usually these things are something like, for example, when you are using Windows, you are used to the fact that basically all the environment which is provided by Windows, yeah, like for example, taskbars and system trays and everything, that it's accessible. Unfortunately, this is not true for uh, mainstream desktop environments on Linux. So this is something we need to improve. Next slide, please. Uh, now, like, so what does it actually mean to make a desktop environment accessible? Well, the first point is crucial. It's actually including an accessibility stack in the Linux distribution. Uh, that means that, uh, I, uh, that you should include uh, several software components like a screen reader uh, and uh, underlying accessibility libraries. Uh, now I realized I skipped one slide, uh, so maybe I, I will just shortly say that what screen reader it is. Uh, basically, screen reader is a piece of software which interacts with the desktop environment and it uh, facilitates the communication between the user and the environment. Yeah? So it can, for example, read the contents of the text field uh, or tell you what button is under your focus, basically. That means that what will happen when you press the space bar and stuff like that. Now getting back to the, uh, how to make the desktop actually accessible. So we need to include the software stack. If this is not true, if this doesn't hold, then basically any of follow-up steps don't make much sense because you could have a perfectly coded accessible desktop environment, but you don't have a screen reader there, you can't use it. But okay, if we pass this first step, uh, then we can move to follow-up steps 
that means uh, starting to work on the desktop environment itself that comprises several steps, like for example, making it easy and intuitive to start a screen reader, yeah? to, to have some common keyboard shortcut, for example. Then to make sure that the main components which are essential for usage of desktop environment, like uh, system menus, uh, various panels, indicators, app switchers, that this is accessible. Then uh, also login screen is, I mentioned it as a separate thing because it's often forgotten about. Uh, then we need uh, some uh, sensible keyboard shortcuts because they are used very often and it should be also documented uh, so that people know what to do, where to start, how to start a screen reader and stuff. Uh, the second part of this slide, which is probably separate, also mentions what can be done next and that's uh, making sure that the apps provided by the desktop environment are accessible, yeah, like a calendar or, or whatever text editor, or terminal. And then when we have solved this, we can even broaden the scope. And that means that we can, uh, we can work on third party applications like web browsers or things like that. Uh, next slide uh, tries to shortly talk about idea. Okay, so yeah, these are quite like intricate things or at least they seem so. So how about making a special distribution for blind people? Yeah, that would be so cool because they would, uh, like they would be everything what they need and it would be so flexible and if something doesn't work, we can just work it around for them. Yeah, you can notice the irony in my voice probably because this doesn't work uh, for several reasons. I think, well, I used like three such distributions during my 14 years with Linux and they had uh, at least two things in common. One thing was that one of these things was that they were like really useful, they were very Nice, nice to use, easy to use. And the second common thing was that they died in two years, basically, yeah? because uh, usually these distributions are maintained by one or two people, and it's impossible to do this in your free time. You have to keep up with upstream distro because they are usually based on some uh, other upstream distributions and stuff like that. So this is, this is unfortunately not a good idea. And also, I think that we shouldn't work around things we should make them working in the first place. And next slide, if I'm not mistaken, uh, is already handled by Lukash because he's going to tell you something about practical things and what, what we tested. Okay, so <clears throat> because we wanted to know how the situation actually is like in January before FOSDEM because we were there as well, we selected uh, a few distributions or spins or how this thing is called in this in such a distribution group. So we had some federal spins and uh, Ubuntu flavors and we wanted to know basically what happens if you download the live image, boot it up and try to start the screen reader. On the uh, next slide, please. And in January, we found that we have uh, basically three outcomes which can happen. The first, for for example, Fedora with GNOME, you find out that everything worked. You could just press a single shortcut and the screen reader started talking and was reading everything as it should. So that was uh, nice to have, but it wasn't so common actually in January. Then, of course, there was a group of distributions, basically, except one, the it was basically all the federal spins. You just booted the thing up and tried to run our cup and you found out that there's nothing from the accessibility stack, so no Orca, no speech synthesis, nothing. <laughs> and of, there was a third quite curious group, which was the Fedora Cinnamon 39. 
where you actually had the accessibility components, but, but you didn't have the screen reader. And we will show you how, if you are really a hacker, you could uh, make the situation right. So let's do it. This video will show the most difficult case, namely the case when there's no accessibility technologies on the live image. This will be shown on the cinema camera spin, the 39 version to, version to be precise. time of all the Fedora spins we actually got some sound and the boot up is done so that's definitely nice of them but if we try to press the accessibility shortcut out plus windows plus s we actually get an error message saying that there's no org at all. So what we will do? Well, we will open drone terminal using the out of two shortcut typing its name. progress and we have to basically hope that we did everything correctly. Maybe we can infer something from the disk activity or so but that's everything we got. or not, well, who knows the fact not me, so let's try. Let's start with the accessibility shortcut again. And it does nothing, but it actually may mean actually nothing as well, so let us try the out plus F2 method. Actually. Screen reader on. Live user at localhost dash live colon tilde frame. Live user at localhost dash live colon tilde dollar. Live user at localhost dash live colon tilde. And as you can see, the install was a success. We got everything we need for speech, including some voice, the screen reader, and the middlemans and everything. So yeah, we can actually try to use this system, at least we can like read the terminal. Blank. Yeah, we can tab left out. Window. Live user. Blank. Speech. 
dash dispatcher dash me zero dot one one dot five left control. Oh yeah, it's window text. Something. But of course, that's not everything. To make this system fully accessible, we would need to fix all the cinnamon accessibility issues, and that's the story for another time. So, as we saw, well, if you are experienced enough, you actually can do a lot of things by memory, but you definitely don't want to show this to a Linux newbie because, well, he would just run out of the room and never return, of course. <laughs> but enough, everything isn't lost because sometimes only a small change can uh, improve things a lot. So, Wojta, let's tell us what you actually did. Yeah, thank you. So, very shortly, uh, basically we saw, and you saw it as well in the previous table, that there were many occurrences of, uh, of federal spins, for example, or other distributions, where uh, it uh, was problem that there was actually no accessibility stack. And so we were wondering how to fix that, and we found out about Fedora Composes. And in the end, it actually took one merge request uh, and some small learning time to fix this in basically almost all Fedora spins, as we see in the next table. So basically, in this way, in one merge request, we solved the step one from some slide, which was like, I don't know, five slides before. And uh, that, that's great because that means that, yeah, the, the user, for example, installs some Fedora spin, but it, before he wasn't even able to test it or, or to, to think anything about it yeah, because the screen reader wasn't there. But now the screen reader is there so he can start it up and start discovering, yeah? So is it accessible, is it not? But at, at least there is something to start. Yeah, so sometimes the changes are very small, but they, they do actually big things. And I am uh, giving back word to Lukash. So when we have uh, step one, uh, we actually get a lot of questions from application developers. Well, yeah, that's, that's sad that you can't use our things, but we have no idea what to do. So we began creating a Linux Accessibility Development Guide, which is basically a set of documents which uh, tells you what accessibility is, what kind of uh, disabilities you have to work with if you want to be fully accessible. And then there's a quite a huge section where we are showing uh, GTK4 widgets and uh, basically telling you how the keyboard interaction works and what the blind user expects from them. And if uh, the stars aren't just right, which isn't always the case, there's also a section what you need to do if you want to create in GTK4 something like like a button, for example, but uh, completely custom. Well, for the simple cases, you can do it, but uh, there are some sections where we are basically saying, don't even think about that because you can't do it because we don't have uh, the public GTK APIs. So don't even think of uh, creating a custom combo box. And then LibAdvita comes and does just this, of course. So, to sum the things up, first, working with uh, upstream is definitely the best way because if you fix and we fix all the issues upstream, the most people will have uh, some uh, positive outcome of that because it will just naturally come to distributions and uh, some, yeah, some other 
lecturers and so on. So first, just do the upstream work and don't uh, create new workarounds uh, in distributions and so on because you will never upstream these things up. I know how these thing, things go. And uh, then if uh, you are interested in this subject, don't hesitate to ask us because we definitely want to help and well, why not? Because we want the best outcome for all blind users. So we will definitely answer questions and so on. And if you want help with the accessibility guide, well, we are on GitLab and we are expect accepting uh, contributions from outside. So. If you, for example, want to write a section for about, let's say, I don't know, hearing impairments or so on, well, just do it and it will get included, I suppose. <laughs> and yeah, we are at the end, so let's go for the questions. Uh, okay, so basically, as I said, we use a screen reader. That's a software component, which basically uh, help us interact with the screen. So when we open a text editor, for example, and there is some text, we use uh, arrows on the keyboard to move up and down on the lines. And when, when we move to a new line, like for example, we are on some line and we move one line down, the screen reader will uh, read the text which is on the line through a speech synthesizer, which is, uh, or it can output the text on the braille display, which is like a special piece of hardware, uh, which, uh, which shows the, the letters or the output shows in braille. And uh, basically that's how the screen reader works, yeah? We, we do something, it causes something, and the screen reader provides us a feedback what happened. Yeah? So when we, I don't know, select some part of text or, or when the auto completion opens in Visual Studio Code or whatever, uh, it gets uh, read back by the screen, by screen reader to us and uh, we can work with that. Of course, this holds in case that the application is written with the accessibility in mind. Yeah. Yeah. Does it answer your question? Yeah. Uh, question, at the moment, which is the most accessible desktop environment for the Linux? Uh, which Linux distribution is the best? Yeah, fine. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I'm kidding, because it can, be, it, can be, it can be the same flame topic, yeah? Um, okay, so I, I suggest each of us say, yeah, or, so Lukas, maybe you can answer, and if my answer differs, I will yeah, okay. answer as well. So, Unfortunately, I can't say it's GNOME free. I can't do that. <laughs> but, uh, well, it's actually made because they didn't rewrite everything to look modern and uh, stylish, so they managed to keep uh, all the things and all the discoveries before. So, made basically just works. Yeah, there was an issue where the for network connection icon and so on wasn't treated correctly, but uh, we actually managed to fix this as well. Oh, GNOME 3 isn't bad in any way, it's quite usable as well, I'm, but so we are now going through the GTK4 and Wayland transitions on the same, for the same time, which isn't very good timing from the point of view of accessibility. There are some issues, but uh, yeah, it's definitely much more better than it was because I started in Red Hat and 
I fix a lot of missing labels in, for example, GNOME Control Center and other parts of GNOME, and in GTK4 as well, because there was a lot of work as well. I, well, the planning for GTK4 had to look quite funny, I'd say. But, yeah, the KDE folks aren't sleeping on accessibility either. They improved things a lot in KDE 6, but, well, they may be lacking documentation or some tutorials because uh, their short shortcuts uh, aren't quite intuitive. Uh, and I think some of them are even missing from the documentation, so some crucial, for example, to focus the panels. So, yeah, what do you have something to add to this? Um, no, I think it's, I think you summarized it nicely. Uh, I also, I remember, I don't know what's the current state, but uh, if anyone remembers the Unity environment, yeah. Uh, this used to be actually very accessible, but I'm not sure what's the current state. But I know that it, it has been somehow continued. Yes. Uh, but I, I, I must say I didn't try it. Okay, maybe we have time for uh, some last question. Uh, ah, okay, yeah, so uh, there was a question about uh, if we can, so, so you asked if we, if we already automate these things, uh, for example, testing the accessibility of desktop environments. Yeah, that, that's what you asked. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, currently, I think this is still in a very early stage. Like th this process we, we did and the, the data from which the table you, or tables you saw were created, this wasn't automated. Uh, but uh, as far as I know, there is actually upcoming a Fedora accessibility test day where this will be focused, but I'm not sure how automated this is, I'm not sure this is automated. Lukas, do you have any more information? Well, um, as I saw the test cases, I don't think we have any automations for Fedora, but uh, in theory, you of course could, should, uh, could automate this, but uh, you usually are working with the accessible tree and doing some matching on it uh, from inside of the tested system. It's not usually then done, for example, by comparing uh, some audio output or stuff. It's, well, it could, probably could be done, but uh, never ever I saw something like that. Okay, so uh, I think we are uh, finishing our time, so thank you everyone for your attention.